But Marty, when he sees him fall out of the tree, saves him from getting hit by the car and shoves him out of the way and he gets hit by the car. So he's never so born. he's the one that gets drugged out. But there's a point that has to happen or not happen for him to be born or not born. Because when he goes in the house, his mama falls in love with him. Because that's just how the timeline's supposed to work. Oh, yeah. She falls in love with the person that got hit by the car. Well, he pushed his dad out of the way. That's so weird. That's so fucking weird. But there's still a point where, like, he has a picture of him and his siblings, right? And for them to exist, his mother and father have to kiss for the first time at the dance. At the dance. So he has all the way up to the dance to fix what he screwed up. And they'll still exist. And the longer the dance goes while he's playing the guitar and all that stuff because he had to help the band out and all that stuff because their guitar player cut his hand trying to get in the trunk to let him out. Yeah, and he plays fucking the future song. Yeah. yeah. But, but so he has, the longer it looks like, the closer it gets to them not kissing. And when he looks at the picture, his siblings are starting to fade away in the picture because... Yeah. The old and it goes in the order they were born. Like the oldest fades away first because they would have existed first. So it's fade away, fade away, fade away because you're getting closer to that not ever happening. And uh, but he fixes it. But the problem is, even though he fixes it and makes them kiss at the dance, he changed their personalities because his dad was a bitch, basically. Yeah. He never stood up for himself. He never did this. So he's still a bitch in the future. You have Biff, the bully. Biff bullied him his whole life, and in the future, well, in present, well, in 1985, at the beginning of the movie, Biff was still a bully to him because he was his boss and all this other stuff, and he yeah. bullied him. But in the past, Marty forced him to stand up for himself against Biff, and that changes his personality. Now he's headstrong. He's a he's a a, a man. He's not a bitch. So, so basically, in the future, when he comes back, he's a completely different personality-wise person, and that. And you know when your kids are raised in a different household, yeah, that makes so they'd different. be different. So, so Marty, different. Marty would be Marty's yeah. the only one that's not different because, because he traveled. He traveled through the time himself. So wait, he's a is he a different version than the one that was in that timeline, or was there never a Marty that's, in that timeline? No, there's a Marty in that timeline. So what happens is when Marty comes back to the future, he's at the beginning of the movie. Doc Brown, who made the DeLorean. Right. Get shot by terrorists because he stole plutonium from them. They get yeah. the plutonium so he can was... make a bomb and he made a time machine instead. What the fuck were they on when they made that movie? <laughs> so the terrorists kill him at the, in the mall parking lot at the beginning of the movie. And Marty, in the attempt to get away from them, accidentally goes back in time because he forgets that it's a time machine. Yeah. So at the end of, before he comes back to 1985, he's trying to tell Doc about it so he can warn him. And Doc doesn't want to know. He's like, I'm having nothing of it. No, no information from the future. Yeah. You, can't, you can't mess with the timeline. Any worse than you've already done. So Marty writes him the letter, and then Doc tears the letter up and throws it away. And uh, so he's like, I got to get, he sets the timer in the DeLorean to earlier than when he left. Because he's supposed to just come back at the exact time he left is when he's supposed to. So there's no overlap of the Marty's. Ah. So one Marty would be leaving as the other Marty showed up. That way you don't have two Martys in the same timeline. That's cool. So he come, but he comes back earlier because he's gonna try to get there in time to save Doc from the terrorists. It's his thought process. But the DeLorean runs out of gas, so he has to run all the way to the mall. And when he gets there, it's right as the terrorists shoot Doc Brown, and you, he sees himself jump in the DeLorean and take off. And then he disappears. And he goes running out there and he's like, Doc. And then he's like all sad and crying. And then Doc sits up behind him. And he's like, how are you? And he's got a bulletproof vest on. And he's like, but you tore the letter up. And he pulls the letter out and it's all taped up. And so he read it after Marty left. So there's a theory about this. It's like, okay, if Doc read the letter, he knows everything that happened in the past. Because that's the Doc from the 1955 that Marty left. Where did he send the other Marty? Because there's no way in hell he would have let that Marty go back into the past and screw it up in, again after they fixed it. So he would have had to send that Marty somewhere else to his death, probably. So he can't. Oh, that, that uh, they talk, That's like uh, what Rick and Morty is like. Yeah. Oh wow. Also, have you seen a Futurama where they 
where Fry kills his grandpa, and then uh, and then he's he's like not gonna exist, and then yeah. he has has to bang his own grandma to become his own grandfather. The nasties and the pasties. <laughs> Bella, send me that picture. Email me that picture of the shark. Okay, I have two. Is it just the animal house like that one? It's the one on the back of the printer. Okay. All right, let's get this ribbon on here. Let's get it on the machine all day. <laughs> yeah, me too, honestly. I ain't <laughs> yeah, nothing better to do. I guess I could watch that movie. <laughs>